Good morning and uh, welcome to another vlog. Um, something slightly different for you today. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was contacted via an email. Um, do I do workshops? My answer was, no, not really, I don't. Never have done. Um, something I've thought about in the past. Um, and we got chatting online and uh, I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. If you're happy for me to sort of, if you think I've got what it takes to do a workshop, I'll uh, more than, you know, more than happy give it a go. And the uh, response was, yes, I watch your vlogs and I think you'd be brilliant at it. Right, great, let's go for it. So today I'm out with Damon, um, who's kind enough to want me to show him what to do. And of course, Mrs. C's out as well. We can't leave her at home. Um, yeah, we're out this morning. Um, Damon wanted to learn how to use his camera in manual mode. Um, he's got a camera, it's a decent little camera. It's a Nikon D500, really nice tripod, very jealous. Um, and he shoots in automatic. He's been to some cracking places around the world. I might bob a couple of images up so he can show you. Um, and I think he does all right. But he likes, he wants to learn how to get his camera out of auto and get it into manual. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. Um, he fancied coming to Langollen, so we're at Langollen and uh, we're up on the panoramic view. And as you can see, we came down for sunrise. It's now past sunrise. Uh, there's no real light. There's a few gaps in the clouds which I'm watching floating over the top. At the moment, I've got the two of them searching through Google, trying to work out how to get through the Nikon submenus. Because if you're a Nikon shooter, why have you got so many submenus? Why? Get a Canon, there's only a few. <laughs> no, really, they're, they're trying to work out how to get the histogram on the back of the camera and how to get the uh, highlight clipping, um, whatever it's called, I've gone blank now. Um, yeah, trying to get the highlight clipping alert, uh, get that to come on, just so I can explain what we're doing. And we all know um, we should be working with the histogram. So I need to try and get his histogram on. Um, I've had a flick through the menus and can't quite find it at the moment. So we're just trying to search through that, but I've showed him on the back of my camera how to get the histogram and how to bring your highlights down so they're not clipping. Um, so yeah, that's basically what the vlog's gonna be about this morning. Um, I probably won't talk through everything we're doing, um, but Damon's quite happy for me to have the camera and he's quite excited by it as well, to be honest. Um, he's been following me for a while, so yeah, it's good for him as it is good for me. Um, I know my way around the camera and uh, yeah, I don't do too bad, I don't think. Right, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna concentrate on trying to get this histogram up and uh, we're gonna snap a few images. At the moment, we're looking at this tree. Uh, I know the light's not great, but it's about lines, composition, and how we set the camera up, basically. So. That's what we're up to, that's what we're doing, and uh, these pair are watching videos now. Cheek of it. Catch you in a bit. So, for all you guys that are not sure how to get your histogram on, or all you guys that haven't got your histogram on, bob your histogram on. Um, Damien's just said, we've just learned something today, if nothing else, and that's how to get my histogram on. So, <laughs> all well and good. He's learning his camera, if nothing else. <laughs> right, I'm gonna carry on with this. Uh, we've got the histogram on. We've had a bit of a chat about why you use a histogram, the reasons behind the histogram. Um, it's difficult for me because I don't know Nikons very well. Um, he's got a touch touch trigger on, which we're not sure how to turn off, but we don't want to waste all day looking for it. The, the light's gone off the image. There's not much there, but we're here. It's more of a learning thing than it is going to get the perfect image today. Um, but we are going to get back something uh, no matter what we do. Um, we've talked about why we would have a longer lens, why we would have a shorter lens or a narrower lens and a wider lens. Explained where what we're looking for and how we're looking for it and we're going for a more evenly spread histogram and uh he's already seems to think he's understanding what's going on in the process of that so yeah you're happy with that yeah. he's happy with that he's happy with that we're getting a good idea of what we're going um that's the problem with some people now the cameras are so good that shorting an automatic gives you such a good image that why do you need to learn manual but it's uh it's quite good that damon's interested in finding out the fundamentals and why it works and why we all do it so yeah we're going to carry on with this and uh Chances are when we see you next time, we'll be somewhere else doing something else. So catch you in a bit. Right, I've just uh, given Damon a bit of a challenge. Um, I told him to set the camera up. We've turned around. We were facing that direction between the, looking at the tree and just working on something basic, basic compositions, basically setting the camera up. He's, he's, he says he's very fresh and new. He's never even bothered using his tripod. He's had it for a while and he said it out, he's had it out twice, but only on a solidly flat ground. Um, the challenge today is we're on a slippy ground down here, if you have a look. Uh, very slippy, just there. The challenge is his tripod legs, every single one's a different length. He's put his spikes on that he's never even used before and got them dirty, bless. Um, and it is, he's just 
putting him in his comfort out you know just taking him out of his comfort zone a little bit and just explaining that to get that good image you might have to go that slightly more extreme so by just putting him in a little bit of you know discomfort it's uh, making him think a bit and keeping him awake and, and, and on on the ball um, so yeah the composition we're working on now i turned around and said there's another image to be taken here um, which is basically this bracken in the foreground we've got a big rock that's hanging over um, leading to the drop off of the cliff or the hill uh, going down into Langollen. It's an okay image, it's a nice mood in the sky. I wouldn't say it's going to win any awards, but the light, as you can probably see, and I've just felt that light change. Remember, I'm going to drop another name now, Mr. Thomas Heaton. Um, it's going to be a name dropping session today. He talked about he can feel the temperature change or feel the, feel the light change, the warmth, you can just feel it. And I just felt that moment exactly then. I was talking to you then and you can just feel the whole ambience change by this little bit of light that's just warming itself through the clouds or through the mist. So, yeah, it is true. It does work. It does happen. Um, and you can probably see the, the scene behind me has just changed slightly as well. Um, everything's become warmer and richer. Um, so yes, yeah, quite nice. So yeah, I'm setting this challenge. I'm waffling a bit now. I'm setting this challenge, set the camera up, and I'm going to have a look and see the basics that we learned already. Um, I was explaining why we would bracket exposures uh, to keep your highlights and your shadow detail. And then Damon says, oh, is that why you bracket? Yes, it is, but there's two reasons. The other reason would be focus stacking. So I've explained to Damon why you'd focus stack. Um, and just while we're talking, you see that little patch of light that's just where the sheep are? So it's making that little field pop out. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it's always watching around what's going on. So yeah, it does. It's just changing really quick. Um, so yeah, uh, where was it? Focus, uh, focus stacking. So yeah, where we'd focus in the image and um, the reasons why we do it. And also, you can also bracket exposures and bracket focus stacking. So there's a lot involved. I think it's a little bit more, more than he needs to know at the moment. Um, which is trying to work on the basics of getting out of auto. Um, but he's enjoying it. And he's just asked me, what do I think? And it's quite a good experience for me. I've never been out of anyone that doesn't really know how to set the tripod up. So it's great. Um, it really is quite, a, it's quite fresh and inspiring. Um, so yeah, we're going to carry on. Don't want to spend all the day on the vlog um, and see how he's getting on with this image. Let's come round here and have a look. Why is it these Nikon cameras got such a sensitive touch screen? <laughs> um, yeah, we're still playing. Um, we were going to leave this uh, position, but suddenly, as you can see in front of us, the light completely changed. Um, we've got full sun at the moment, but it's really, really midi, mi midi, misty and foggy behind, and the light's changing all the time, and it's dead nice. My camera at the moment is behind you, yeah, uh, balanced on the edge of the cliff or the rocks. Um, there's no wind, so hopefully it'll still be there when I go back to get it. Um, I'm going to show you an image I'm taking, so at least you get one image from me as well. Um, what we're talking through now with Damon is, uh, he, he was trying to set up a composition with this bush. Um, and he's asking me what I would do and how I would do it, and compared to just putting the camera on the ground. Um, and I've tried to explain, with this image, um, we're using three elements. We've got this little round bush in the middle, in the foreground, a little bit of bracken. Um, we've got, we're ignoring the tree, even though it's probably in the image. We're then using the white cliffs and the rock faces down there as another point of the image. So that's your bottom one and your top right hand one. And then we're using the castle as the left hand one. So it actually calls in an actual triangle. Um, it would probably also work as a square format um, and just having those three points. And then you've got the valley going down through them. Me knees, me knees, I'm getting old. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, that's it. So by coming down lower, you've closed that gap up there now. So you can fit it all in a frame a lot better. Whereas before, you had a big patch of bracken in the middle, didn't you? So it was quite a distance between the two. I know one thing Damon mentioned earlier on when we were messing around is he said he's interested to watch what I do, the way I do it, actually in the field. He said he's quite surprised by the way, um, quite surprised by the way I chuck my camera around and uh, quickly get my tripod out and pop it out and boom, and there I go, I've got an image. And I was just turned around just now and I was balanced on the top. And he's like, oh my God, you've got a mountain goat. So yeah. It's being confident. I'm quite confident with my camera. I'm quite confident in the surroundings I'm in. Occasionally there is places I go where I'm not. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much why it's confidence, yeah. Confidence from your tripod and confidence from your camera. So, moral of today is, get confident. Right, we're off again. Right, I'm gonna show you through, or talk you through one of my images now. Um, 
I've taken a couple of images similar to what Damon's been doing just to try and give him a bit of a comparison and when we do a bit of processing later on. Um, the plan is not to process today. Uh, Denise is telling us we need to go for a walk to warm ourselves up. My knees irk so I'm now balanced on this rock. Um, my battery's going to go flat the second I try and switch this on. Um, I've come onto this rock purely because I like this base rock in front of us. So I'm going to focus on the base rock just give me a lead in up into the image. I've also got the road that's taken me back through the image that way. Um, there are some cars over in the distance which I'm going to clone out because I don't really want them in there. I've got a house right down in the bottom corner which gives you a bit of scale to the image um, and then I'm just waiting for the light now to drift across. It's pretty much the lights out constantly so it's not a bad looking image because you've got some nice clouds in the background um, there's a bit of blue sky and you've got these nice moody sort of clouds and then it sort of just drifts off into the distance where it's misty and hazy um, not a bad little scene I'll see what I can do in post processing and make it look a bit better I've shot uh, two or three images as well see if I can get a slight pano um, not so sure if I'm going to use it yet uh, but I explained to Damon that was another way of, of bracketing exposures as well Camera's on f8 because I think that's the sharpest we're going to get. The histogram's pretty good. It's giving me a shutter speed of 200 per second. I'm going to focus on the foreground. Take one on the foreground, and then I'm going to focus on the midground or the far ground. It's only needed two just to make sure, just to get all the detail in these rocks down here. We're going to make a move. Um, we're going to go to a different location. I think I'm going to take Damon up to a waterfall um, so we can get a slightly different different perspective on things, get into the woods a bit more, try and find some moving water and uh, try and set the camera up in a different way. Um, quite another simple image but again it's an easy way to talk through simple images. So yeah, see you in a little while in a different location and uh, enjoy this image. Right, we've just come down to the waterfall as you can see. Uh, we've just had some lunch, nice sandwiches that the good lady wife's made us. Um, all part of the bargain, eh? Aha! No, really, um, it's nice to get some food inside our bellies. It's about one o'clock, half past one now. We've been, been out since sunrise, as you know. Damon's been fully enjoying himself. He's just actually taken his first ever longish water, waterfall shot. Um, about one and a half seconds, and he, he's never sure how to use the filters and how to get the image to work right. So we'll just talk one through pretty much a basic simple image looking down onto the waterfall like a big vista type thing we've moved down now we've come down towards the edge of the rocks now so we're a bit closer to the water um, just to try and concentrate more on the movement of the water trying to get this long swell it's nice soft and smooth there's a couple of little bubbles turning and giving you a bit more of a circular sort of motion um, but yeah it's all about learning the manual controls and how the manual controls are working in this situation, we're working on uh, shutter speed more than anything else. We've got a, an aperture of f8, and now we're just working on the shutter speed to give us at least a second. Um, 
that gives you the soft water or you can go mad and go up to 30 seconds and get these little swells so we'll have a mess around with this and uh, see what they turn out like at the end he's doing all right don't tell him i said he's doing all right <laughs> Okay, well, that's the end of the session. Um, it's gone a bit windy, and as you can probably tell, it's pretty dark. Um, we've brought the light out of the car, and we've taken a few evening shots. We came back to the viewpoint again to finish off the day where we started. Um, the light went down pretty quick, and we didn't get back in time for the sunset, but we have got the after hues, the glow in the sky. Um, so we've taken a couple of sort of silhouette shots. I think they're actually quite nice to be honest And I know Damon's enjoyed doing it and doing something a little bit different So we started the day where we started. Uh, we ended the day where we started should I say? Uh, what do you reckon Denise? It's been a good day. Good. Yeah, very good day. <laughs> That's the wife by the way. Do you know that? <laughs> no, she's enjoyed herself and what do you reckon? It's been a wonderful experience. Wonderful mate. experience. Really good enjoyed man. it. I know I spoke earlier on and we've probably already seen it on camera, but um, yeah, do it again. Oh, definitely. He'd do it again, he would. Whether he'd come back with me or not, I don't know. But he, he, he's enjoyed himself, and uh, I think he's got some pretty good images out of it, to be honest, as well. So, uh, yeah, he's I'm going to say he's, a very, yeah, he's very much more confident. Yeah. I think that's the, the main key thing. Okay. He's going to go away today knowing that he, he's not scared of his tripod. Um, he knows where the manual controls are and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, in all in all, it can't be a failure if he goes back feeling more confident with his camera. So that's all good. Um, from me, again, if anyone else wants to do this, um, I'm up for doing it again. Um, I'm, I'll do a workshop with anybody at any level. Um, I don't class myself as being anything special, anything better than anyone else. Um, if anything, I'm probably the other side of the coin. I'm probably the, a little bit more down to earth, a bit more Jack the Lad, and I've got a different style about me. If you don't watch me vlogs and you're new to this channel, 
check out my other vlogs and you'll see and get to know what I'm like. And Denise will be out with us as well. Yeah. So Mrs. C always joins me anyway. So man or woman, any age, any style, we can do something for you. And uh, yeah, we'll get you to know your camera if you're new with it, or I'll try and help you do something a bit different. If you're not sure on anything, ask and uh, we'll set something up just for you. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna say bye for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with it. I know it wasn't a normal vlog, but hopefully you've got to see a few images from me and I'll grab a few off of Damon and I might even grab one or two off of Denise because she's had her camera out as well. And we'll till next time. See you later. Ciao for now. Bye.